Hello, how are you? So a while back, I did a video on the problem with angular signals, as you can see here. And I discussed the specific problem with signals changing and when we want to call some asynchronous API request or some other asynchronous call uh, and you want to get data from that. And I discussed in that video that it wasn't really that a standard way to do it. It seems the Angular team was listening and come version 19, there is going to be a new resource API that has been just released experimentally and it promises to be a really exciting new API which will encapsulate everything that you need, the error state, the loading state, local changes, all of what you need to actually handle external data from API calls. And it provides it in a nice, easy to use package, well integrated with the Signals uh, Reactivity API. So in this video, we are going to look into that and see what it brings to the table. Okay, so first of all, what is a resource? Now a resource, there's very little documentation about this, but it is explained a bit in the PR introduced by Alex here on the Angular GitHub page. And it sort of explains the concept of the resource. Now a resource is a sort of an, a representation of an external data or an external dependency, which you can get through an asynchronous operation. Let's look at an example application where we can actually see what this would be. And I have here the Angular search bar application, which is a simple application where we want to just search for books and to also look at the detail of some books if you want to. So you can actually search for any book here. And if, for example, you search for Angular here, you're going to see that you have, you can click on any of the items and you can see that you have this book detail page. Now, the important thing about this book detail page is that there is a book ID which is passed from the root parameter here. Now this root parameter is then mapped onto the input signal that I have in my component. So if I go for example in my component here, you can see that I have a book ID which is a required signal. Alright, so this is brought about by of course by using the router function called with component in input binding which automatically binds any root parameter to the specific component input. Alright, so in this case it is book ID. So what we want is basically call an API, which is the Google Books API, and then fetch the information about that specific book and then show it in the form of a signal on the UI like this. All right. So currently it is working, but uh, as you can see, we are using the derived async utility function provided by ng extension. Now it's really nice and all, and you just need to provide a promise based function here and you are all set to go. Because you have this book ID here in the form of a signal, it is going to automatically uh, call this function again whenever the book ID changes. So this works really well for my use case currently, but it is a third party function. With the resource API, we can actually replace all of this with the resource API, which is a native API uh, provided by the Angular team itself. So let's try to switch over to that. Okay. So uh, in our case, we have a detail. So the resource which we were talking about earlier will be actually the detail information here. So let's just comment it here for now because we want to take some information from here as well. And let's just write another detail here. And we're going to call this the resource API from the Angular core. All right. So how do we get access to this? Well, currently it is only part of the next version 19 version, which is not yet released. Now it's going to be released in a couple of weeks. So you can wait around for that. Or in my case, if you want to test around with this, you can actually use the ng update CLI command to update it to the next version of version 19. So if I go to my package.json, you can see that I have all of my Angular core packages to 19.0.0 RC0. And because it's using material, I'm using the 19 next 10 for material and CDK here. All right. So once you do that, you are going to be good to go to test out the resource API. This is experimental currently. So of course, it's not to be meant to use in production. All right, so we are going to create a resource and this is going to be our detail, the book detail. Now, the most important thing in the resource object here is the loader itself, okay? And this is basically the only required thing that you need. Now, this loader is going to be a promise-based function just like we had with derived async. So we can just copy paste this function that we already had here in the loader here. So. This is pretty nice. We can just directly map our derived async to this. So we have some error here. And the error is because the resource basically is not actually a value. So to get the value of the data that we get from this resource, we need to use the detail.value here. 
So we're just going to switch this to test this out. And once we save this, we can go back and we can see that, okay, we get the Angular for enterprise applications, which was the root parameter that we got here. But what if we change this without initializing the component again? So how do we test that out? Okay, so let's just search for Angular testing, for example. And I have this quick search results. And when I click on this, nothing will change except for this parameter here, input parameter. So only the input signal will change. And the component, it's not going to initialize itself again. So let's test that scenario and let's click on Angular 2 test driven development. And now you can see that the parameter changed here, but you can see that our data wasn't refetched. So the resource is not refetching itself. And why is that? Now that is because we are using the signal here implicitly and we're not actually specifying to the resource about when this resource should be refetched. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to, uh, apart from the loader, we can also define a request option here. Now this can contain uh, a single signal or it can contain a combination of signals. You need to specify all of the sort of the triggers that you need to load this resource or all of the dependencies. So let's specify here the book ID signal, okay? And since you specify the book ID here, we need to also specify the request here and this is just the book id so we're going to just specify the book id here and then here instead of the district book id which is the current parameter we are just going to use the book id that we get from the request here all right and let's save this and now you can see that it loads the initial book detail fine because it's getting it from the book id and that was when it got when it was initializing the component so now when we do angular testing again and we click on this one, for example, you can see that our application, our resource actually refreshes and it's the resource, the API call is made again here. All right, if we go back, go to our network calls, let's test this again. Let's test this one, Angular 2 test development. You can see we make our API call again. And you can now see that the input signal is changing. The component is not initializing again, but it is sort of refreshing the detailed resource again. All right. So this is nice and at this point we have replicated the functionality that we had earlier and you can see that it's a very simple and explainable code here we didn't need to jump through any hoops or do any sort of workarounds to uh, do such a simple thing so this is one of the greatest things uh, about the resource api but this is not the only thing about the resource api so let's look at some other things which are really interesting about the resource api so as I said before, initially that for any API call specifically, we're not only really interested in the value, we are also interested in the, the error state and the loading state of the uh, asynchronous request because it can take a bit of time. So uh, the great thing about the resource API is, is that it provides baked in uh, support for the error state and the loading state. So let's say, for example, we add the loading state here. And if, for example, we want to show the loading state, all we have to do is, we are going to add an if condition here at the top and we can do detail dot is loading it's not loading and we can just specify a loading text here just for the time being so if you try that out if you save this you can now see that there is a loading that appears here now if we want to see this a bit more clearly we can actually do something like this so we search for this and we set it to 3g for example and we do Angular 2 test driven development, you can see we get the loading state here and then we get the, the value of our resource. Okay, so that's really nice. But what if there is an error? So for the error as well, just like with loading, we can actually add error uh, checker here. And that is if detail.error, we can just show the error here. All right. And uh, in order to replicate the error, I'm just going to like change the API a bit to uh, a faulty API so that we can see how the error looks. When it refreshes, you can see that we get the error type error fail to fetch and we don't get the value here, all right? So pretty nice. You can see that it sort of handles these very common cases of loading errors and showing the value here. Now, what if you want to manually refresh this resource for some reason? So let's say we add a button here at the top and let's call this refresh. And in this button, we want to refresh this uh, resource whenever we click on it. Well, the resource API also provides functionality for that. You should refer to the same detailed resource and you can just call the reload method. 
Nice and simple. Let's see how this looks. And you have this refresh button. Now, once you click on this refresh button, you can see that it loads the this again. Okay, let's make it a bit slower. So if you can do it in 3G and I click on refresh, you can see it loads it. What if I do it multiple times? So if I do it multiple times, you can see that I'm not getting multiple API calls. And that is because the resource API basically uses the sort of mimics the exhaust map functionality. If you remember RxJS exhaust map functionality. So until and unless the resource or any of its dependencies change, for example, any of the signal change which it depends on, it is going to wait for the existing call to complete before fetching the resource again. So this is really nice built-in functionality for the most common use cases. All right, this is not all. You can also make local changes to your resource because oftentimes, for example, when you want to change that resource or you want to provide, for example, you're fetching data from for a form, you would sort of fetch that data from a resource and then you would uh, allow the user to make some local changes to it. So the resource API also provides facility for that. And how do we do that? Well, okay, so let's add a function here and let's uh, call this function as update. Let's also make this a bit good looking so that it doesn't overlap on top of each other. So in this case, we are going to call another function here and let's say update book, let's say. And this function, all we can do is that we can do update book and this is going to be a function which is going to update this and so this dot value. Now this value is not a read-only uh, signal. So that's a great thing about this. You can actually update this. So let's update this to incorporate a change in the book where change in the book where only the title is updated to the updated title and in this case it's also saying that b can be undefined so if it's undefined we are going to just return b itself all right so update book and you can now see that once we click on update you can see the title changes all right and when we refresh it again you can see it again gets it from the external development to update it but once you do a local change, you can then refresh this. So you can, in the meantime, when you update it, you can actually allow the user to save this. And then you can refresh it. Once you refresh that, you can, you're going to get the fresh data from the server. So you can see it's a nice way to have that whole CRUD process, which is a very common process in your Angular applications. All right, let's just end this video with just seeing how this works under the hood a bit. So there's also a status property of the resource. And let's see how that status property changes. So in order to get that, the status property it is basically an enum. So what we want is that we want to declare a status words computed here. And what we want to do is we want to get the resource status. This and yes, we want to use this dot detail, but the status signal, which actually gives back the value of the enum of the resource status. So status words we are going to use here. At the top, just right beside this, and let's just add a simple div here. And we're gonna do status and status words. All right, let's save this. So now you have the status. So once you refresh this, you can see that the status was loading for a brief while, and then it uh, went to resolved, which is the final state when you have the valid data. Once you click on update, you're gonna see that it changes to the local state. So you have a way to distinguish between whether this resource is basically updated from the server or it is your local copy and once you refresh it again you can see that it goes to the reloading state and it goes to the resolved state again so this is another way to track your resource to see in which state this is in and show it to the user on the screen and this local change this is really very useful in working with for example forms so you can for example use it with the ng model to be data binding because it is a writable signal, you can actually just use that signal to uh, also show the data from the external API call and also update the data in the same way and then save it for sending it to the API again. Now, so these are all of the basic things, uh, sort of a small rundown about the resource API, the new resource API. Uh, and I found this a really well-rounded API. One caveat that I want you to understand is that this is only meant to be used for reading or for fetching data in response to signals, all right? Uh, so don't mistake it for using it for uh, updates and mutations. Now, if you go back to the code, you can see that all of the thing is reactive. Uh, there's no imperative code here. You can see that you get the book ID from the signal. The book ID directly triggers the 
detailed request and then you can use a detailed request whatever wherever you want to do in your API resulting in a very nice reactive sort of API which was the goal of the whole Signals API in Angular. So all in all it is a very nice addition to the Signals API in Angular and I hope this ends up being stable sooner rather than later so that we can also use it in, in our production apps. So thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, please hit the like button or let me know in your comments. Or if you're not subscribed yet, I do subscribe to the channel because I discuss all of these things regularly. And I hope to see you next time in the next video.